the event wizard, we set up the results of the feedback mm -hmm. for the disease score protocol. Right. And we said we were going to go out and get a threshold. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to show you that now. Did we get it? <laughs> we got it. Okay. Got it. Okay, so let's take a look here right now. And wow, look at that. Perfect. Right on it. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change this again. I'm going to take this back up to 70 just for this purpose. Okay? And you're going to see that red line start to dip. But let's go up here, see if I can get them all on the screen that I want. Right here. Okay, I have what's called text stats showing me what's happening in the event wizard. And then I have the results of what I've asked for. So first off, we saw before that equation x equals percent z ok and the uther threshold. Okay, that uther, x equals uther or target size. As I scroll over, right, what does uther stand for? user threshold. Okay, that's okay, and it's not an amplitude-based user threshold. It's simply a keystroke we stole. Okay, so don't make it over complex. All it is is we needed a key on the keyboard to have a numerical designation that we could take up or down with a keystroke. It could have just as easily been the theta threshold, it could have been the alpha threshold, it could have been any th threshold. The key is it's enabling us to control a number from the keyboard. Is everybody clear with that? It doesn't look like everybody's clear. Everybody understand? Okay. The only reason we happened to pick user threshold is we thought it'd be the least confusing versus us using theta threshold. People would have been, well, okay. Be it that it's user threshold, all it is is the U key and shift U can take a number and go up or down. Has nothing to do with go, stop, ignore user. Okay, user threshold is on ignore in the standard protocol. We're just stealing that number and that keystroke. Right now, it's 1.2. Okay, which reflects? Plus or minus okay. 1.2 standard deviations okay. from the norm. Okay. Now, watch what happens when I hit the U key on my keyboard. When I click on the screen, see? What did it do? Increased. And I hit it again. And if I go shift U, OK? So all it is, is this user threshold is simply controlling the bullseye size, which represents the standard deviation plus or minus. If I'm looking at 248 z-scores, OK, and I choose the bullseye size to be plus or minus 1.0, means it's a two standard deviation window, right? Plus or minus, right? Zero being the middle, plus or minus 1.0 is going to be a two standard deviation size window. Do you think there's going to be more z-scores that fit in that or fall within those parameters or within that bullseye or more that fall within plus or minus two standard deviations? Okay, so there's going to be much more in two. This gives us the capability to adjust depending on the client need. How normal are they? bad wording but okay does that make sense so if they have a lot of abnormality there's a chance that that 1.2 or 1.3 I have it set at might need to be a little bigger okay does that make sense now there's something that we found when you get people that you know have some quite a bit that's wrong and they have some parameters that tend to be far from the norm let's say two 2.5, three standard deviations, there's a huge drawback. Okay? With this particular protocol, because it's plus or minus standard deviation, so if I have to go all the way out to three, what happens? Plus or minus three, now I got a six deviation window. It's humongous. Okay? The problem with that is, even though the majority of my problems on the high side, now I'm letting the brain that was normal run wherever it wants to go. Not good. Okay? That's where the next protocol we're going to look at came to be and was born. 
we needed to bias the window and say, okay, we know we have to go to plus three on the high side, but the bottom side, we can still keep everything nice and tight right around zero and go negative 0.5. So we were able to shrink that window even though we needed to get the deviance on the high side. Yes? Right. Mm hmm And then just vary the, the green. The percentage. The percentage. You can do that. Between those two, you can mm -hmm. make it easy enough. Right. You can do that. You will find that the newer one gets you there much faster because you can target truly what's the problem. Okay? Instead of now, what I did with my daughter, okay, and I'm allowed because she's my daughter, not that I would do it with anybody else's daughter since I'm not a clinician, but I did it anyways, is she was having some trouble in school. She's in kindergarten. Okay? She's one of these people that will no matter who you're talking to, when you're talking, she'll interrupt you. She wants to be center of attention. Okay. Come to find out later, we found out she has a severe hearing problem, which was doing some of this. But to start with, I started doing Z-scores. I wanted to look, see what was going on. Okay. So with her, when she first started, she had some things around three standard deviations high on the positive side. She didn't really have any hypo stuff going on. Okay. So I, I set my window at that negative 0.5, and we started at about two standard deviations, so it was training anything outside of two. So from two to three, I had some things out there. Well, literally, for her, within 10 sessions, she went from having this sporadic stuff up at three to everything tight around within one standard, half a standard deviation low, half a standard deviation high. Okay, within 10 sessions, and I'll show you that later. Uh, yeah, she did. However, it didn't get to where I wanted it to go. Now, come to find out, I was like, this doesn't make sense. She, her her Z-scores were like white. There was like no colors anyways. I'm like, this kid should be like model A student. Well, then we took her to the doctor. Huh? No, not necessarily, because she still showed some peak performance signatures, what we'll talk about later. But her problem wasn't that. It was really her brain. It helped, but... Then we had her tested and found out she had severe hearing loss in the left ear, 30% hearing loss in the right ear, and she was missing out on 13 different letter frequencies. Well, what it was, she had fluid inside her ears that had hardened in her tympanic ear. Her eardrum wasn't moving. Now she's had earplugs, and now she's like a different kid. But we would have never known. You know, it was just one of those scenarios. She's missed all, almost all of kindergarten, really, because she couldn't hear anything. So how often does that happen? That a teacher, what did the teacher say? She may need Ritalin. She can't pay attention in class. She couldn't pay attention in class because she couldn't hear. And she was trying to like, compensate to always interrupt because she felt like she was missing everything. Ritalin is very good for your hearing. Right. <laughs> <laughs>